everyone. I'm Dr. Priya Sapaha. Today I'm going to explain part two of abetment in the Indian Penal Code. In my previous video, I have already explained the meaning of abetment, which has been mentioned under section 107 of IPC. In this video, I will explain who is abetter under section 108 of IPC and also under section 108A of IPC. So let's start. Let's understand who is a better. A better has been described under section 108 of IPC. In my previous video, I have already explained the meaning of abetment. Precisely, abetment has been described under section 107 of IPC, which says that if any person is abetting another person for the commission or omission of any unlawful act, that comes under the category of abetment and the abetment can be of three levels the first one is abetment by instigation second abetment by conspiracy and third is abetment by aiding so if any person is abetting another person for any illegal or unlawful act that person is called as abetter under section 108 of IPC. Now this is a first essential. Now second essential is if a person is abetting another person of any act for commission or omission, that particular act must be stated as an offense under IPC. If for which the person is abetting is not an offense under IPC, then it won't be abetment and thereby the person who is abetting is not an abetter. So it is necessary that the person must abet another person for any sort of offense which has been mentioned under IPC. Thirdly, the person who is committing an offense must be capable under, under the law for committing an offense. Now capable under the law for committing an offense means the person should be of sound mind or the person should be major. Now here the person should be of sound mind or major also includes that the person must be having a guilty mind. And again, he is also having a knowledge of the consequence of the act for which he is abating another person. That means who is the person who is capable? First, he must be major. He must be of sound mind. He must have guilty intention and he must have a knowledge of the commission of the act and the consequence of the act for which he is abetting another person. There are five types of explanation under abetter. The first one is abetment of illegal omission. This particular explanation states that the abetment of the illegal omission of an act may amount to an offense, although a better may not himself be bound to do that act. That means if any person is abating another person for any sort of illegal offense, then no matter whether that person is committing that act or not, the person who is abating is committing an offense. That means he is guilty of abating another person for that particular offense. For example, if A is abetting B to murder C, no matter C is not doing such illegal act and he refuses to do so, but still A is guilty of abetting B to commit murder. Next is effect of abetment is immaterial. Now, as far as explanation two is concerned, it clearly states that if any person is abating any other person for any sort of offense, even if the person that particular offense has not been completed, but if the even the attempt has been made, then also the person who is abating will be considered as guilty. He will be guilty of that offense for which he has abated another person. For example, if A has instigated B to murder D and B after getting instigated, he stabs D.
but D recovers from the wound. Here A cannot fulfill, here B cannot murder D. That means there is not a completion of an offense. But still A is guilty of abetting B for murder. That's why no matter for any sort of offense for which a person is abating, no matter it is completed or not, the person will be guilty. Next is, person abetted need not be capable of committing an offense. As far as explanation 3 is concerned, it has clearly stated that it is not necessary that the person abetted should be capable by law of committing an offense. It has been described under in explanation 1 that the person who is committing an offense must be capable by law to commit an offense. But explanation 3 st clearly states that it is not necessary that the person who is committing an offense must be capable by law to commit an offense. That means it comes under the category of exception. This is also related to general exceptions and general exception I have already made the video two series of general exception which you can see in my previous videos. Now, if a person is not capable of by law to commit an offense, then also if the person who is abating that person to commit a crime and with the result that person commits a crime, then also he will be considered as he will be guilty of that crime. Now, who are those persons who are not capable by law to commit an offense or they have committed that offense in a different level? First one is child, second is lunatic and third in a good faith. Now, the illustrations of explanation three. Explanation three is technical in nature. That means it clearly states that in this explanation, if three category of the person that means child lunatic or under good faith if the person is committing a crime or an offense they are not guilty but the person who is abating them to commit a crime he is guilty of the offense for which he is abating them to commit a crime how first category is child it is stated under explanation 3 of section 108 of IPC that if any child who is below the age of 7 years, he is not capable to understand the nature of crime. Secondly, he doesn't have any intention to commit an offense. Thirdly, he is not at all understand the consequence and the knowledge of the act which he is committing. That's why even if he is committed an offense, by instigating or by abating by the another person he is not guilty but the person who is abating a child below the age of seven years he will be guilty of that offense for which he is abating the child to commit that's why it is under the category of exception general exception i have already explained in my previous videos you may see that videos to understand the basic and the detailed nature of general exception. Now the second category is lunatic. Again lunatic are those persons who are again not at all capable to understand what is wrong and what is right. Secondly the nature of crime and thirdly they are not having any intention to commit any wrongful act because they are having a disease. Thirdly they are also not having any intention. Fourthly they are not at all capable to understand the consequence of the act and they are not having the knowledge of the act they are committing. But the person who is abating a lunatic to commit any sort of offense which has been mentioned under IPC, he will be guilty of that offense for which he is abating lunatic. Third one is by good faith. Again, good faith is if any person is doing any illegal act or any offense out of good faith for which he is not having a knowledge, not having an intention and he is not at all 
having any sort of knowledge of the consequence of the act then that person is not at all guilty of the offense which he has committed for example if a is jealous of b and he wants to give poison to b then he said c to give a glass of a water to b if that b is thirsty b c out of good faith gives a glass of a water to b because he was thirsty and he was not at all aware that in that glass of water there is poison and there was a death of b then because c has done this act out of good faith so he is not at all guilty of the offense which has been committed by him that is murder but a is guilty of the offense of abetting c to murder b that's why these are the category which comes under exceptions which has been explained under section 108 explanation 3 next is explanation 4 that is abetment of an abetment is an offense confused this is also technical usually in abetment there are two person but what happened when in abetment there are three person then who will be considered guilty of abetting an offense for example if a abets b to abet c to kill d then who will be guilty now here again i am saying if a abets b to abet c to kill d then c will be guilty of commission of that act and a and b both are guilty of abetment because a have abetted b and that he has abetted that to abet c to murder d that's why a and b are guilty of abetting to murder and c is guilty of commission of the act that is called the joint liability under abetment next is explanation 5 that is abetter need not concert in abetment by conspiracy now again listen it carefully it is not at all necessary to the commission of the offense of abetment by conspiracy that the abetter should concert the offense with the person who commits it it is sufficient if he engage in conspiracy in pursuance of which the offense is committed in a simple language if a person who is a mastermind who is instigating or abetting any other person that means if a is abetting b to constitute a murder of c and c takes the help of d in the murder of c then no matter d and a have never met and there was not an exchange of thought of a and d but still he will be considered as a part of that conspiracy because a has instigated b or abetted the b to murder c and for the murder of c b has taken the help of d that's why no matter there was not at all a uh, agreement of thoughts between the three also but if the person is a part of a conspiracy by any form by aiding or by instigating or provoke or in any form then he will be guilty of abetting next is abetment in india of offenses outside india this has been mentioned under section 108a of ipc which says that a person abets an offense within the meaning of this code who in india abets the commission of any act without and beyond india which would constitute an offense if committed in india that means if anyone 
is abating any foreigner who is at the time of commission of act is in india then it the person who is abating is guilty of abating that person for example if a is abating b who is a foreigner to commit a crime or any offense in india and b commit that offense then a is abating b for a particular offense that comes under the category of 108 a of ipc so this is the end of part 2 of abatement in ipc in which i have explained the meaning of abater and the explanation of abater which has been described under section 108 of ipc and also section 108a of ipc which describe the abatement of foreigner who is committing any offense by abating in india hope you like the video and if you like it do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel for detailed notes you may visit to my website that is priyasibaha.com and you may also follow me on fb page that is law college you instagram law college you twitter dr priya sipaha and youtube dr priya sipaha thank you for watching see you soon bye bye